Hi, I'm Jackie Capstick, and this is The Natural Healing Reel. We bring uh, all of the natural healers and alternative healing modalities to the mainstream. Today, I'm really excited because I have a friend of mine here, and her name is Linda Honing. She has a beautiful spa. Um, it's called the Urban Oasis, and I will introduce her to you right now. Hi, Linda. Hi, Jackie. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm really excited to finally be here. I know we have uh, endeavored to do this for a while and, and both of us with busy schedules and kids and whatnot. It's, uh, it's really exciting to finally get to this point today. I'm super excited. So yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna get you to start by just telling us a little bit of bio, a little bit of background about yourself and then um, I'd love for you to share your, the, the heal, I, you have many things to share, but we're going to focus in on not on a few things today, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, so um, maybe I should go back to a little bit of my journey, which brought me to um, currently I practice as a Reiki master healer and massage specialist. And what got me into that was a number of years ago, I was involved in a bad car accident. Actually, I've had several, but this particular one brought me to the healing journey that I am now on. Um, and I think that as a healer, for me, I, um, it's like being a teacher, we teach best what we, what we have been through. So as a person who has suffered, I know how to help those who have also suffered because I've experienced that pain and suffering. So um, I think that's made me like an even more compassionate, deeply understanding healer and, and massage specialist. So yeah, it's been a long journey. I've been involved in Reiki practicing for over 20 years. Um, when my kids were really small, I wanted to learn all of the natural ways to heal my children. Um, so that I could help them on their own journey whenever they're, you know, besides bumps and bruises, emotional and spiritual well-being was also really important to me. So I found Reiki through actually a, a medical doctor who looked after my kids when they were small. And um, the rest is kind of history. I've developed a practice. I have lots of people that come. And of course, it is in my garden, hence the urban oasis, because my garden is quite an oasis itself it's beautiful and yeah my building is separate from the house so it makes it very intimate and quiet out there as Jackie will attest to she's been to me for massage and it's just a beautiful place to, to practice you know I hear the birds out there it's very peaceful and it's also really a grounded space because we built it in between three trees that we had to take down that were damaged so I feel like it's kind of nestled in this little um earth sanctuary and i you know i teach about earthing and grounding and so it's just a really special place to to work it's yes it certainly is um can you explain for uh those who do not know reiki and what why would they want to seek out a reiki practitioner of course um, Reiki is basically universal healing energy. It was uh, created by Mikeo Usui and um, way back. And I am a, a direct lineage from Mikeo Usui. It is not myself necessarily as the healer, but I am attuned to the practice of Reiki. The healing energy comes from the, the universe, it comes from the earth's energy and from the universe. And it travels in through us. And I'm basically the conduit. Think of it like a toaster. So I'm the toaster. The plug going into the wall, into the electricity is the universe. And my client is the toast. So it's a, a great way to look at it because then you understand, not that I toast my clients, but do you want, you know what I'm saying, right? Um, it's a great way to understand the analogy of, of how Reiki is actually um, connected, the three pieces, the client, yourself, the healer, and the universe. 
Yeah, I've, I've used that uh, toaster analogy myself, actually, to, for my kids just trying to explain, you know, if it's not plugged in, there's no energy coming through, right? Right, so, right. Uh, yeah, just yeah, uh, it's a, a vessel. Good, it's a good, yes, it's a good visual. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the one thing that I, you know, a lot of my students ask me, well, am I going to get drained when I'm giving energy? Well, it's not like it's coming from us in order for us to be that conduit for the universe we are actually also getting healing at the same time. So that energy comes in us and through us and then out through our hands and also the intention that we have. And during that whole process, we're also getting healed. Yeah, that, that, is, that is the gift, right? The gift is, is yeah, in the giving for sure. Um, so when, when you're having Reiki and, and you're a conduit and everything. So what would somebody, if they were hurting or they would be, you know, how, what, how do they know that they want to go have Reiki? Like they're going to say, this isn't working. I've tried this, you know, maybe I want to try Reiki. And, and what would, what would bring them to the, that thought pattern? Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, hopefully they would have heard about it or, or if not suss out a Reiki master uh, healer to see the possibility of finding another way to heal themselves. So, or hearing it from a friend, like having that experience, you know, when you go to a good movie and you want to tell people about it, right? So hopefully um, they hear about it from a good source that makes them want to go and, and have that experience, have that treatment. Now, the thing that um, is important to uh, understand that when you're on the table having a Reiki treatment, there's many things that can happen in your body during that process. You might hear things, you might have sensations, tingling sensations, you might feel the hand going over your body, you might feel warmth, um, you might see colors, and or you might actually fall asleep. I mean, sleep is definitely um, a good result of having a Reiki treatment. But also many thoughts might come into your mind and they could be past thoughts, things you're sorting through. It's kind of like um, accessing the library within your brain of all of our life events. And so sometimes people say that they were thinking all about all the stuff that happened when they were really small. Well, it's not a coincidence. It's, you know, it's actually going in and accessing all of those things and helping that person then bring that out so that you can release it and heal it. Right. So I think that that was what I was looking for. It's about moving that energy out of the body, right? That got stuck. Yeah. What we don't know is stuck. Yes. Right. That's attracting other things to get stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it like in moving energy, I've really understood as of late you know, I've always understood it, but really, really understanding how vital it is that right. we, that energy has to move through us. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's quite, uh, it was just something we take for granted, right? That, that it is kind of releasing out of us, but not always. Right. And there are many ways besides Reiki to move that energy and to help to release things, even meditation, whether it be a sitting quiet meditation where you're actually, you know, completely emptying your mind or whether it be walking in the woods, that is a very wonderful way to actually have a, um, a cognizant uh, moving meditation where you are not necessarily speaking to anybody, but you're walking through a place like a forest or walking at the beach or, or sitting on the beach collecting stones. It's very, you know, they talk about meditative processes, right? Yeah. And so those are all um, other healing opportunities to release old stuck patterns and, and energy or simply standing barefoot on the earth. Earthing is fantastic for healing. Yeah. And moving stuck energy, right? Yeah. I remember um, just being a hairstylist and you were as well. And you come home at the end of the day and you've, you know, you've been with so many people and you've taken on that energy if you're sensitive, which people are, and not knowing where to kind of put it all, like it just feeling like full and kind of buzzed, right? And Wayne Dyer, that's what he said, is just take your shoes off and go walk on the grass, just go get, 
and you know, I'd be out there because I really didn't have any other tools at that time, right? To, but it, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's good. I've learned a few other things too now. That shaking, yes, yeah, tapping crystals. Crystals are fantastic for releasing energy and grounding. Selenite is one of my favorite crystals. I actually will have a little piece right here. You know, selenite is wonderful. Um, smudging with sage is also beautiful. That's a nice piece, Jackie. <laughs> selenite is uh, a very good clearing. Yeah, Palo Santo wood, or might as well. Let's do your drumming. You know, drumming, I made this drum, which was um, a beautiful process. Uh, so drumming is another form of, you know, uh, releasing and allowing yourself to be really in the moment and uh, moving energy, right? You can drum it slow and quiet, or you can really bang it, um, sitting on a beatbox, you know, all of those things help. Um, but those are things that you're doing for yourself, with yourself, right? A Reiki healing uh, situation is where you have a, a healer such as myself putting laying hands upon and you know I do scan I teach how to scan the body which is over and above and as a as a person laying down you feel that it's just amazing to feel the hands going over all of your your entire body but when it comes to the healing process I teach with hands-on so touching because as a, pra as a person laying on the table, you want to know, and it actually helps to work with your practitioner where those hands are. Is it on my throat chakra? Is it on my heart chakra? Is it on, you know, my third eyes? You know, what is going on in my body and what am I feeling? Oh, right. She's on my ears and, you know, oh God, I was yelled at a lot in my life. And, you know, now, I, you know, and that comes to your mind and that actually helps you to release those things in the moment, right? Probably the awareness of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so you're doing that, uh, you're teaching, you're a Reiki master, and so you're teaching courses. Mm -hmm. you're, and you're also doing um, the massage and Reiki treatments just kind of as well as, right? Yeah. How often do you run your courses for teaching Reiki? And, and do you have to have any like pre-qualifications to do that or if somebody was interested to learn could they just come of course well right now considering the state of covid uh, i am not able to teach because we're not allowed to have anybody in the house so and that's where i'm currently i have been teaching is at, at my home um, and my classes are, are usually six people during covid when we could teach but prior to that I mean, 11 and 12 is a really nice number. Um, it's nice in a, in a bigger group, but yet still small because you have the opportunity to um, really hear what's going on for other people and always what's going on for somebody else you can identify with, right? So it's a beautiful process when there's a, a few more people. Um, during the summer, it's wonderful. I use my garden and we sit outside and, and do my class out there, which is just beautiful. And uh, we have an opportunity to stand most of the class with our feet bare on the earth, which is, you know, lovely for three days. So I really enjoy that. Um, but going forward, I think with COVID, what we're going to have to do or what I'm going to have to do is create an online program and possibly do it through Zoom. Now, I know it's not the same at all because there are lots of parts of the class where we have to do eye contact there's mirror work. There's many things that you do together with somebody, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah. in couples, and um, I'm not sure how that will look. Although I did do um, recently a class where they, they had breakouts on Zoom and I didn't know that was possible. So that's kind of exciting that there is that opportunity. So two people can go off and in a breakout on Zoom. So maybe it it's a possibility. I'm, I'm very much a a hands-on person, a touchy-feely person, and to be able to really look at somebody in the eyes. But we'll see. Um, it's it's something I'm thinking about creating just because of COVID right now. Yeah. Yeah. But I love it. It's Teaching is my, my favorite thing. 
affecting the evolution, the trans, uh, in the the um, transformation within every single person in my class is just uh, it's beautiful to see. Right, and when you're teaching and you're just learning it deeper and deeper, right? It's just a deeper understanding, right? When you're sharing, I I love that too. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I want to talk about something a little bit different. You started um, a shirt day at school. Oh, yes. What color is the shirt? Blue? Blue. Hashtag be inclusive day. Okay. Be so, day. well, here are the chakras. I don't know if you can see that so well. Yes. Kind of. Okay. So, the throat chakra is the color blue. So, um, when we think of the throat chakra, it's what we say, it's everything that we're, how we speak um, to each other, wh what do we say when we're with other people. And uh, I have a daughter that has like special needs and she is like literally the light that shines through my heart. She's amazing. And uh, there's nothing more painful than seeing your child um, be bullied or excluded. And that happened repeatedly to my daughter, Isabel, and uh, to the point where we took her out of school in grade three, because I was just like, I can't watch the exclusion at school. So we homeschooled her for a couple of years. She went back to school in grade seven, no, grade eight to high school. And things had totally changed. And she was um, also dancing at a great dance studio very inclusive and Isabel never felt um, any exclusion there. But I went on a ferry with um, my husband and my daughter to Pender Island during Easter. And Isabel would often say hi to people, adults, expecting a hello back. And twice on one ferry trip, two adults looked at my daughter like she was from Mars when she said hello and walked away. And, there was, and I, I, I didn't even have the words to say. But what I decided to do with that is, uh, you know, is, is choosing to put my power somewhere where I could actually make a difference with that information rather than get angry about it. Well, I did get angry, but in the morning I decided to make something of that. So I started hashtag be inclusive day and it's June 1st every year. This is gonna be year four. And I asked everyone to wear the color blue shirt. So I started to make shirts that says hashtag be inclusive on it. Um, and it, it all happened so fast. It was uh, actually all the schools adopted the idea. They loved it. So June 1st came around from Easter, which is April to June 1st. That's a really big for the school board to agree that they would include that for the year. And um, some schools still are doing hashtag be inclusive day June 1st. And I'm hoping this year that it is again in all the schools. And my intention is to make it a global event. So I'm working on working with some people that are um, more famous that may be able to say something this year. All they need to do is drop a post and say, hashtag be inclusive day, June 1st, wear blue. And hopefully we can get that conversation going where we're all a little nicer to each other and include people. I mean, you know, we, we know how the world is right now and we really need to make it a kinder place. So that's, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have, I mean, even if you don't have a disability, you could be, you know, have everything and it's tough, right? And so, yeah, the people or kids or whatever, I mean, I also have dealt with that too, right? And so it is heartbreaking and I'm sure every parent knows that, right? So, and I think that like the, the pink shirt day almost seems like it's brought more of it. Right, because you know they say what you talk about, you get more of, because they don't. Right. The universe doesn't know right or wrong. So, what I love about yours is it's like be inclusive, which is just bringing more inclusiveness. Yeah, it does. It's not. Do you know what I mean? It's a positive. Kind of of yeah, it actually. When you say be inclusive, it it requires you to take action. When you say don't bully, it's a negative negative, right? right. Not bullying is a negative. It's not like, you know, yes, it's it, it's all important. And, you know, I mean, I, I understand the intentions of the of the pink shirt day is, is beautiful, but 
um, when I came up with hashtag be inclusive, it was like, yeah, we need to, we need to include everybody. We need to make everybody feel like they deserve to be at the playground or, you know, I mean, even socially as adults, there's exclusion that happens all the time. You know, you see it everywhere. And um, so that's my intention is to make it a global event. I know last year was a really, really tough year because uh, um, George Floyd died on June 1st. And I was, yeah, it was, what a terrible day that was. And yeah, yeah, I I ran through the woods and I took little um, hashtag be inclusive be inclusive um notes and pass them to everybody as i was running by and everyone was you know i mean torn between feeling like so emotionally distraught over george floyd and then yes this is a wonderful thing and nobody i didn't have the time to tell them what it was all about yeah. they just appreciated the hashtag be inclusive so hopefully this year it's going to be um more received and eventually make it around the world yes uh, we yes, can like our blue shirts on June 1st and, and, you know, be mindful of just making everybody feel they deserve to be here. As they do. Right? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So I recently took pictures of Isabel at the beach in her, uh, in her sweatshirt and I'm going to be posting those on Instagram. So getting that party started. Because it takes time, as you know, to put things out there and, and make it happen. Yeah, I'm not the best on the social media. I'm learning. <laughs> it's, it's kind of painful for me, though. But uh, yes, it's um, that's a big one. Like, that's a great, great intention, like a worldwide, right? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So whatever we can do to, uh, to make that happen, it's just intention, right? And yeah. awareness. Well, everybody just post pictures of yourself on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, on June 1st, wearing blue and just hashtag be inclusive down at the bottom. And, you know, it's going to, it's going to go around. It's going to, it's going to get, um, it's going to get noticed this year. I think I really feel it and it, it's going to happen. And then, you know, it's just another conversation like the rainbow sidewalk that we have here. And, you know, all of the other black shirt day now this year, that was really great. I mean, it's, we're, we're, we're getting there. I really feel that the world is healing. I feel like good things are coming. You know, I'm, I'm a very optimistic person, obviously, through being a healer. I would not do very well if I was pessimistic or <laughs> half empty, you know. So I feel, I really do feel that um, it, we have the potential this year to have some really great things happen. Yeah, I do too. It's uh, it's an intense year, and it's uh, they say there's a lot, a lot of momentum, a lot of a lot of room for releasing old baggage and and creating creating. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are spending some time in our heads to visualize what it is yeah. that we want instead of bitching about what we don't want. Right? <laughs> What's not working. Oh, I want to show you something that I have here that I I just it was a post that somebody did on Facebook last year sometime and one of the things that i use in my class is a statement called i see, i see you right and that's all even a part of being included right and so somebody have this is that not i don't know how well you can see that maybe back that's awesome isn't that spectacular yes and it's it, to me when when i saw this i mean it was for something else but it's it's like she's saying i see you even through one eye, I still, I see you. Right. Yeah. And, and we all, we all need to feel seen, right. We all need to feel seen and heard. And, um, that's a really big part of Reiki because, um, in my class, Reiki level one is about healing the self. Reiki level two is about healing others and master is mastering all of it, which there's so much in becoming a Reiki master. But in order to get to the place where you can actually heal others and be unencumbered, you really need to work on your relationship with yourself. And you and I both know many ways to do that. Um, Reiki is a fantastic journey. Um, there are so many processes that I have you go through that help you to release the things that or drop the things that don't no longer work for you 
You know, it's more than letting go. Letting go, I find, is, is another way of saying the word try. You know, when we say, oh, I'll try to do that or I'll, I'll try to be there, what, you know, it's usually a reason to fail. It usually never happens. It's like the word maybe. So I feel like when we say the word, oh, let it go or I'm going to let it go you know, I'm going to let it go. It's like you're holding on to something and Tony's trying to pull it from, I'm going to let it go. And it just doesn't happen. But when you say, I'll hold this instead, when you say drop it, it's like, you can't, if you, if you have that intention to drop it and really release it, you're going to drop it. Right. So I think that's a really good one. That's something that came to me when I was at Stonehenge all by myself standing on the earth. It was, you know, to teach others how to drop things and not, I mean, it's a whole process. I'm telling you the, the Cole's notes version of it, but you know, dropping things as opposed to letting go is way more powerful. Yeah. Just in the words, you can hear it. Right. And yeah. I, I hear you with that. Uh, well, I'll try or maybe right now oh, that just is like the worst that's the worst thing to hear from somebody isn't it yeah. <laughs> just that you're not doing it <laughs> yeah i usually call people out on it so that means you're not coming <laughs> right i'll just I say like hear that but it's like well if you're going to be here then just tell me you're going to be here or whatever trying is just not not going to work right trying is telling you that that they're yeah or I'll try, I'll try to be more kind or I'll try to be inclusive. Can you imagine that? Yeah, right. Like, let's try right. to vote. Let's try to do all these things. Well, no, it's either you do or you don't. Yeah. So there's no in between. So healing is the same thing. You know, I can't go into my wellness center and go, well, I'm going to try to give you a healing today. Right. You know, that just doesn't, my intention has to be a hundred percent with that person. Yes, that's what and it also, does. Yes, and also on the receiving end, when you come for a massage, you don't lie there and go, well, I hope I'm going to have a good massage today. You're just like, oh my God, I'm so ready, right? And so the same thing when you are receiving a healing or whatever it is that you're receiving in life, you have to be 100% committed to receive that. You have to be open and ready to receive that. That's really, really big right there. We have to be ready to receive it, right? We can ask, but if we're not open. Yeah. Yeah. And just being aware that we're not open, right? Like I think we, I think I went through a period of time where I was asking and going, <laughs> yeah, you gotta open your arms. <laughs> you gotta be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let it in now, right? Because we just don't see ourselves or understand that really till we get moving with it, right? Yeah, it's, it's a very good question to actually ask yourself, actually, you know, am I, am I ready to receive this? Am I open and ready? You know, people, um, I think often run on that, um, that, uh, uh mouse reel, like, oh, I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this. We have to stop ourselves and go, okay, am I, do I want to do this? Like, what am I getting from doing this on this? you know, day to day. So to, to be mindful of what we do every day, it's like eating healthy. It takes, you know, the opportunity for us to say to ourselves every morning, okay, today I'm going to be, I'm going to eat really well, or I'm going to stay grounded, or I'm going to take time out to be mindful. And when I'm getting healing, I'm going to be ready for that or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you have to be ready and mindful of literally everything i know sometimes my husband says to me oh my god there's so many things to think about i can't do this right and i'm like just it, you know you don't have to bite the whole elephant all at one time just one pant leg at a time just do this today right and make sure that in that process you eat well you're you know take some time out for yourself and if you go for a massage be really present in that or if somebody's helping you because you know you're struggling or whatever, just be really present and and allow that to come in. And a good way to do that, like a good way to get present. What are your tools for for bringing yourself into presence? Because we all know that we're off trailing in the subconscious mind most mm -hmm. of our day. <laughs> really? How do you? 
Breathe, that's it. Yes. So I said to you earlier today, breathe, right? You know, like, honestly, um, yeah, life can be hard. Life can come at you, you know, from all directions, all at once. And it can be really hard. And the most important thing, and I, I do this with myself, is all of a sudden I go, like, oh, my God, I need to breathe. You know, if I just I actually was going to get it tattooed on myself, but I, I don't need to. I remind myself. There are times that I forget, and then I, you know, I'm all scrambled, and I think, what is going on? All right, okay. Just breathe. And then in that moment, it's like there's something quite magical about taking a breath. Really, you need to take two or three. And then you're just like, okay, sit down with maybe a pen and a paper. What's on my mind? What are the things that are bothering me? Pick five or pick three. Pick three things that are that are up for me right now that I'm struggling with, right? And then write it down. And then just breathe again. And just, just get yourself, just take it down, right? On that note, yes. what would be your uh, biggest obstacle in your life right now? The number one obstacle that gets in your way in your life from doing, getting, besides COVID? Um, well, um, physically, I have my in-laws living with us. So that's a big challenge, working with and managing two old people right? It's thrown, uh, you know, a lot in that I n never even dreamt I would be doing. So that's become an obstacle. It's hard to manage my business and my daughter. I've taken her out of school because of COVID because they're here. Um, so that was definitely a challenge. However, um, I, I think that one of the most important things that I could say is the word responsibility when I say I'm responsible for my in-laws and my daughter and my house and all these things, um, I break that word down, my ability to respond. So um, how we respond to everything is the most important and beautiful thing. So I can get myself all stressed out, but then when I take that breath that I was telling you about, and then I go, okay, so how am I going to handle this? How am I going to, what am I going to do in this? What, what choices do I have in this moment to handle this situation? And when I ask myself that question, I respond completely different. If I don't stop myself and take a breath, then I don't handle what's in front of me very well. So my biggest obstacle is um, having two more people in my house that I have to take care of, right? But having said that, it's all being handled quite well. And I'm actually enjoying having their company, although it's a challenge because it's added a, another complete dynamic to my life that I, I wasn't anticipating ever. And I'm learning other things from them, right? So that's my biggest obstacle because it's preventing me from better time management because you can't um, predict the day. If that makes sense. It does. I know those days. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm handling it pretty darn good. Yeah, I think you are too. Yeah, you look, uh, you look pretty chill for having all that going on in your house. <laughs> um, I, I, I work out every day and I also make time to dance at night. Like just put on some music and dance, dance it out. It's fun. You'd be surprised. Right. And you don't need to have a partner. I do. I dance too. <laughs> what about, yeah. Crazy. I know the tunes when I'm making dinner and, and, uh, all is good. Absolutely. And you know what? It's, uh, it's fun. It, it, it is fun. Right. Fun. It's, it's funny. Like, you kind of almost have to get over yourself to do it, which is silly. <laughs> we're so uh, we're so in our head about everything. About you know, um, anyways, the the whole society box, right? Right. And we're turning into a circle. Okay, we're bending out those bending out those corners. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know what? So uh, COVID hit. And the gyms are closed. Uh, I, my dance studio has uh, been closed. 
And so I bought myself, you can't see, but while you can see the corn, this is my ballet bar. So I have a ballet bar behind me. We have two stationary bikes and I have a giant rebounder from Germany that I bought myself at Christmas time. So we have it all. So, you know, there's no excuse. If you want to ride, hop on a bike. If you want to do a class, there's a belly bar right here, right? This is my dining room slash gym. Love it. So you, you have to, you have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone, step outside of your box of how you think life should be and, and be a little more spontaneous and a little more creative so that you can manage to take care of yourself in all of the ways that are necessary for your own personal spiritual well-being, your physical well-being and your mental well-being. Yeah. yeah. Just so you know, I've had that ballet bar. Uh, Dean bought it for me when I first met him. <laughs> right? All the years of dance, so he saw that as a workout thing. Anyway, well, that's not even I have that. It's, a, it's an amazing piece of equipment. You'll love it for the rest of your life. <laughs> I, I love it. It's got my yoga mat on top and my weights there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've got the same setup. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah, it is great. Well, we're, we are, we are Gemini's Jackie. Right. That's true. So here's a, here's a final, here's a final question. What would you say to your 18 year old self? What advice what or not, not even advice what do you, what when you think of your 18 year old self what do you have to say um good question you know what i have lived a remarkable life when i was 18 i was really smart um i uh was just before my main car accident i ran marathons i went to school and then i worked i be, was becoming a teacher for early childhood education at the same time that I was um, becoming a hairdresser. So it was like school, school, work, work, and then any spare time I had trained for a marathon. So what I would say is I was, I'm really proud of her. She was awesome. Yeah. Love that. That's wonderful. Yeah. I love that. No regrets. No regrets. Okay. So we'll, I'll uh, wrap this up and, um, uh, you have other uh, healing and stuff to share, but we'll meet up again down the road too far and uh, catch up on the Urban Oasis. And I'm going to put the information for your contact for someone who wants to do a Reiki class or just have some treatment. You're a phenomenal, phenomenal massage. And with the Reiki, they're clearing it all off at the end. And, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a gift. So, um, yeah. Sounds good, Jackie. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on you again, young lady. I haven't seen you for a while, so. Yeah, maybe this week. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Healing from all the dental work. <laughs> my face is not good. Last week I was doing a podcast with one of my friends just said, looks like you had bad Botox. This is the one look right? so three, four days later. It's like, oh goodness. You guys are getting old, right? It's I know, I know. <laughs> well, we just rise with everything that comes up. You just go, okay, next. <laughs> That's right. I was proud of myself for doing the podcast, even though my lip was hanging down. <laughs> <laughs> I got over myself enough to do that. So there's lots of growth coming, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? It's not what's on the outside anyway. It's what's on the inside. That's right. Yeah. Well, you're a wonderful woman. Thank you so much for inviting me. And you as well. And until uh, uh, next time. Yes. Thank you, Linda. Namaste. Namaste. Bye-bye. Bye, hon. -bye. Bye,